Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 24 of Quattroporte, the review series for the Super Saloons and Sports Saloons of Gran Turismo 6. And in this episode we're featuring one of the best, quite simply, Super Saloons in the game. It's often overshadowed by the C63, for obvious reasons. The C63 is a premium, it's a newer model, so people will naturally have more interest in it. It has a larger engine, more power, and is faster than this car. However, that certainly doesn't mean that this is a bad car by any means. This vehicle, which is incidentally the Mercedes E55 AMG, is still an incredibly strong all-round super saloon. One of the strongest in the game. As far as the Mercedes models go, it is second only to the C63. And it is a fantastic super saloon in its own right. Now from what I've seen, you don't see a huge amount of people using this car. That's often the case with many of the cars that I review, because obviously with so many cars in the game, there's only so many that you can use realistically on a daily basis. But this car is certainly deserving of your time if you're looking for a super saloon, which not so many people use, but at the same time is definitely capable of winning races, especially if you're talking about straight line performance. Now this car does have a significantly smaller engine than the C63, it's a 5.4 litre supercharged V8, it's rear wheel drive, fairly obviously, and it produces pretty much high end muscle car levels of power and torque, huge torque in fact, very close to the amount of horsepower that it puts out, which is not an uncommon trait for Mercedes models actually. Many of the engines that Mercedes AMG models utilise are very similar to American engines, very big torque and very low lazy power, which I personally love. I think that's a fantastic way to develop your engine. It means that it's never really working too hard and you've always got that performance and that torque instantly, even in the low revs. This car puts out 887 horsepower and 882 foot-pounds of torque. Now it is a Mercedes luxury model, so it's no flyweight. It weighs just over 1400 kilos, so it is pretty heavy, even for a super saloon. Thanks to the huge power though, it still puts out 626 horsepower per tonne, which is super sports car level, which again, for its weight, is very impressive. The PP is pretty high, 605, not the highest of the Super Saloon class, but pretty high nonetheless. There are relatively few Super Saloons on Gran Turismo that sit at more than 600 PP. As far as the price, it is cheaper than some of the other Super Saloons and actually costs slightly more, funnily enough, than the C63, around a grand more at 105,000 credits. So it is pretty expensive, but that means that it is still cheaper than the Jaguar XFR and the Audi RS6 and the BMW M5. So price-wise, it's actually surprisingly well-placed. It is expensive, but it does still undercut a surprising amount of its rivals. You wouldn't really expect this to be cheaper than an Audi RS6, or I wouldn't have, at least, but it is and that's pretty cool. Now as far as straight line performance, the weight hinders it a little bit in low end acceleration. Getting off the line, it's not the quickest of saloons, but for mid range and top end performance, and especially top speed, it is one of the strongest saloons in the game. It can keep up with some supercars, some super sports cars, it can beat a wide variety of racing cars. Top speed wise, you're looking at around 270. So around the same kind of speed as the C63, but it doesn't quite have the same acceleration as the C63. And its draft potential is not necessarily quite as strong as the C63 on tracks such as Special Stage Route X. Make no mistake though, this car is certainly no slouch. It's one of the quickest saloons by far, and one of the quickest cars, domestic market that is, on Gran Turismo as a whole. Overall, the reasons why I would particularly say that this is such a good car to go for is because it has a very good amount of everything 
It's got a high amount of power, a high amount of torque. The weight is pretty high, but not too high. The PP is reasonably high. The price is high, but still good value. The top speed is very high. The acceleration is very good. And it's also not necessarily underappreciated, because people do tend to respect this car, but underused. Many people opt, as we said at the start of the video, to go for the more obvious choice of the C63 or the M5 or the RS6. But this car, for those of you who fancy trying something genuinely different, because even compared to the C63, this is a completely different animal to that car. It's significantly larger than the C63. It's wider and lower overall. It feels more aggressive, I would say, than the C63. Overall, the C63 actually feels more, I would say, almost Japanese in the way that it delivers its performance. It's very technically accurate and efficient. Whereas the E55, being a slightly older generation AMG model, feels actually more like a muscle car in some ways, which I think is pretty cool. So, as I said, if you're looking for a genuinely different model, it's a great choice to go for. And that's it for this episode, so I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.